All right, it's time for our semi-monthly update on Jack Eichel, and I say semi-monthly kind of joking, kind of not, because we do make a lot of videos talking about Jack Eichel, but I mean... It's kind of with the territory, right? Everybody cares about Jack Eichel and the entire trade potential saga that we've got going on here. For those who don't know, though, Jack Eichel is the Buffalo Sabres captain, a young guy drafted in 2015 who is a superstar caliber player in this hockey league. The problem? Well, he's playing on the Sabres, and the Sabres have sucked for so long that the entire time Eichel has been here in Buffalo has just been nothing but constant failure. As a result, because we know of Eichel's own determination and the kind of guy that he is, there's been a whole bunch of trade speculation, a whole bunch of trade rumors. Will Eichel ever request a trade? Will teams go after him? Will this happen and will that happen? All that stuff has been discussed. But we had ourselves a recent piece from Elliot Friedman and Jeff Merrick on Sportsnet 590 to Fan that kind of goes over a different update as to the Buffalo Sabres captain. I'll leave a link in the description to the tweet because the tweet they have has a little snippet of the audio sample and it's pretty much all you need to hear if you want to just get the basic scoop of this entire Eichel thing. But pretty much they talk about the New York Rangers, the team that just went out there and fired their president and fired their general manager. Now, we kind of have an idea as to why they might have been fired that isn't really confirmed anywhere, and if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. But... Official word from the insiders, from the guys like Darren Dreger, etc., say that... Apparently, the Rangers and their overall ownership were just not satisfied with the speed at which the Rangers were rebuilding and in which they were coming back to playoff contention. Now, Jeff Merrick opens up this audio clip on 590 The Fan talking about how he feels like if the Rangers really are telling the truth, if that's the absolute 100% no-lies version about it, that... They just wanted to be better sooner, and because they're unsatisfied with where they are, they fired the president and the GM. There's an idea here that Merrick is like, yeah, you know, because I feel maybe they're in a spot where they want to speed everything up, the name that comes to my mind is Jack Eichel. To which Elliot Friedman then goes off on his little spiel, and he says a few interesting things I wanted to note here as well. Again, it's all in the radio hit, so you can go ahead and check that out if you want to hear it for yourself. But Elliot Friedman pretty much says that the Rangers already were going after Jack Eichel, and it was very, very prevalent just what exactly they were trying to do there. Before we even had the firings, before we had all this Tom Wilson stuff coming out, the Rangers were in the talks for Jack Eichel. And Friedman said that before, the Rangers were legitimately pushing for it. They wanted to try to get it done, they wanted to get a move, and it all just kind of laid upon the shoulders of the Buffalo Sabres management, to which they eventually said, sorry man, not today. And so, the main idea, the bread and butter that we're talking about here is the fact that apparently the Sabres were indeed in talks with the Rangers for Jack Eichel, and they considered it, they thought about it, they sat on these trade ideas, eventually just saying, sorry fam, not now, and so the Rangers then backed off. Everything happens afterwards, the Rangers start playing, Tom Wilson happens, now the president and the GM are both fired. But for Jeff Merrick to come back out here and bring up the idea of the Rangers going back in for Jack Eichel, because hey, if they really want to speed things up, what has everybody been saying they're going to go out there and do? Hey, it's going to be a first-line caliber center. They still have uncertainty as to what's going to happen with Philip Schiedel, with Brett Howden, not to mention Buchnevich as well. I know he's not a center, but he still is there. And also next season, you have yourselves Mika Zibanejad and Ryan Strom, who are both going to need new contracts. So that can get really messy really quickly. And so, if you take a look at the Rangers and the way they're built, hey, they do have young pieces. They have very good up-and-coming young stars like Capo Caco and Alexi Lafreniere. Vitaly Kraftsov's on the team. On the blue line, you have Adam Fox, who's already amazing, but he's going to be even better. Keandre Miller's looking to be good. Niels Lungfist is coming in soon. You've got Zach Jones, too. That guy's going to be crazy good. Braden Schneider also on the blue line from that 2020 draft. Big pickup right there, quite literally speaking. You have the goaltending, and of course, you also have Panarin. So, if you guys need to go out there and assert yourselves with a number one center of the future, who can still be good in the next six, seven, eight years, is it a Jack Eichel you go after? And because the Rangers have so many young pieces and so many really good 
quality assets that do have a very long shelf life here. It's kind of why everybody's been kind of saying, okay, if it's going to be a Jack Eichel trade with the price that we had heard from Renault Lavoie earlier this year of four first round caliber assets, there are only a handful of NHL teams that actually would be able to make do with that price and actually feel like they're winning the trade. As we said, there are a lot of teams that could fulfill that asking price of four first round caliber assets, either first round guys who are developing like first round guys, first round draft picks or other assets that could be valued in that same tier. Sure, the Vancouver Canucks could send Pedersen, Besser, Miller, and Hughes for Jack Eichel, but they wouldn't do that because they'd be crippling their franchise. It's pretty much just LA and New York who have themselves the amount of assets, the quantity, to justify sending away, I don't know, Keandre Miller, Capo Caco, a first, and who knows, Niels Longfist for Jack Eichel. If the Sabres want four first-round caliber assets, the Rangers can still get that done and have themselves a good team remaining. Because if you get rid of Capo Caco and the first and that package that we had, you still have Mika Zibanejad, you still have Panarin, you still have Alexi Lafreniere. So this is pretty much the result of the New York Rangers going out there and being lucky because, hey... If Lady Luck is on your side, things can happen to you that really wouldn't be imaginable for anybody else. And don't worry, I'm not going out there trying to make war with Rangers fans. You guys are lucky, but I'm just saying that because it's a fact. You guys got the first overall pick after getting the second overall pick right there. Two straight lottery wins. That's luck. And then you had Artemi Panarin sign with you guys in the offseason. That's also kind of lucky, too. Sure, that doesn't devalue the overall package you present as a hockey team, but it is something worth noting. Other teams have not been super lucky, and as a result, they don't have the same quantity of assets to be able to expend in regards to a potential Jack Eichel trade. Imagine being able to pull off a trade like that, trading away prospects and picks or whatever, and still having a team that has a first line of, I don't know, Panarin, Eichel, Lafreniere? Like, heading into the next decade. That's crazy, dude. That kind of trade can still be made while keeping Shashirkin in net and keeping Adam Fox in the blue line on that power play, sending pucks up to Lafreniere who finds Eichel in the slot. Boom, there's a goal. Crazy stuff right there for the Rangers because the quantity is just so in their favor. And so for Jeff Merrick to come out here talking about the accelerated profile that the Rangers may exhibit when it comes to forcing their hand at a trade... It's interesting to note that the Sabres at first just said no, and that's why we didn't see that trade be completed. But now that the Rangers are in turbo mode, now they're in a spot where they just got their president and GM fired for being too slow with it, who knows if they're really going to go for it now. And so I want you to talk to me in the comments about this entire thing here, because we didn't even bring up anything that I think is brand new. Like, everybody kind of knows what's going on here, especially with the Eichel stuff. So, if you're a Rangers fan and you want to see Jack Eichel on your squad, with the asking price that we had before, four first-round caliber assets, what is the most you would be willing to pay? Because when it comes to the Rangers, they've got a lot of stuff. Lots of stuff that could be valued at first-round caliber or better, to be honest. So, if it is that package we had of Capo Caco and Zach Jones and the first or whatever it was that I said, I don't know, let me know in the comments. If it has to involve a Lafreniere instead of a Caco, do you still do it? If it has to involve a Caco and a Kraftsov, do you do it? If it's Jack Eichel coming back, what is the most you would be willing to give up? Because I know when you start talking about Lafreniere and Kako and maybe Panarin, maybe Zabanajad, a lot of Rangers fans do get kind of antsy because they do love their guys. But, I mean, that's a normal process for fans of a hockey team, so I'm not really going to criticize anybody for that. But either or, tell me in the comments what would you give up for Jack Eichel. And if you're a Sabres fan, I guess, because we do have the Sabres fans coming in here, I'm sorry to you, by the way, because I always make videos bashing your hockey team. If it's specifically the Rangers we're talking about here in a trade scenario, what is the least you would accept for Jack Eichel? Using that template of four first-round caliber assets. Talk to me in the comments what you think. I hope you enjoyed this finish of Ash Rolls and I and bye.